today. Um, I am driving up a farm track, oops, on the west coast of the South Island of New Zealand near Whataroa and we are going to go and visit one of the most extraordinary rock outcrops in the South Island of New Zealand. I think this is probably my mm, one, one of the top few anyway in the whole country because it's, uh, it's uh, got a massive sort of um, implication. So um, I'm with my friend Marty who's very interested in nature and interested in geology and all sorts of ecology and that sort of thing and um, so we're going to go and visit this rock outcrop at Gaunt Creek which is a little creek um, and I'll show you with the camera where that is so that's the valley in the distance and you might be able to see some cliffs on the right hand side and so what's going on here is that range of hills is the foothills of the southern alps and at the foot of the hills is the alpine fault and the rock outcrop that we're going to visit is a slice like a vertical slice through the alpine fault itself so the alpine fault is one of the world's greatest geological faults it's a huge feature in New Zealand. It's highly visible even from space, as you can see in this NASA image, where the white area is the snowy mountains of the Southern Alps. And on the western edge of those mountains, you can see a really straight line because that straight line is the Alpine Fault and the mountains have been uplifted alongside it to the east. It is also a plate boundary fault. So it is actually marking the line between the Australian plate to the west and the Pacific plate to the east. We're just going to go up this gully to the little light coloured outcrop there, which is the outcrop of the Alpine Fault. And um, we're going to take a really close look and see what we can see. It's a very bright sunny day, but you can probably see a transition from a grey coloured cliff up the top there, yeah. getting kind of greenier and turquoiseier down to this point here. So let's have a close look. And if you look carefully, you can see a, the green grey rock here at the, above, um, a more muddy bouldery rock here so it's got these chips of schist in it and the join between these two types of rock is right here where my finger is okay so if you follow down there you can see the line going up here and that is the alpine fault so that means that this is the Pacific Plate and this here is the Australian Plate and I can actually touch those two plates, those two tectonic plates with my fingers right on the fault line. The Pacific Plate goes all the way across to California, it's a huge tectonic plate. The Australian Plate connects us under the Tasman Sea to Australia and into the Indian Ocean and a whole huge swathe of the Indian Ocean. So this is the meeting point of a massive structural feature of planet Earth and the best place to see it in New Zealand, Gaunt Creek. So these grey rocks of the Pacific Plate here have come up from possibly as deep as 30 or 35 kilometres below the surface of the Earth. And they're thought to be about somewhere like three to five million years old. Down there, the temperatures are incredibly hot. And they've been moving up at a rate of something like one centimetre a year on average. But that doesn't mean they've been creeping up every year by a centimetre. It means nothing's been happening for a long time, for 250 or 300 years, and then suddenly in an abrupt earthquake, there's been perhaps a metre or two of uplift and then it's been quiet for the next 250 or 300 or 350 years. 
So the rocks have come from very, very deep in the earth where the temperatures and pressures are incredibly high. These greenish gray rocks right on the fault are called cataclasite. It's really soft and mushy. That's why fault lines tend to be eroded out of the landscape as a very clear feature in New Zealand. Lots of our valleys are along fault lines. We have straight valleys like the Hutt Valley near Wellington is eroded along a fault line. So very soft rock has come from great depths and the plate boundary or the fault line is dipping down at this steep angle. So on the other hand, this material that's underneath the, um, the cataclasite is very young. This is actually glacial gravel that has been overridden by the deep material coming over on top of it. So this stuff was uh, laid down in the Ice Age when there were huge glaciers around here and the material has been sort of washed off by meltwater off the glaciers. And so it's a kind of gravelly glacial deposit about maybe 15 or 16 or 17,000 years old, something in that range. So very, very young compared to these much older rocks. What we're going to do now is we're going to walk around the side of this outcrop. And now, if you come up to where I am, we're looking at the fault that's been cut through at a different angle. So instead of going up on a slope, we're seeing it, if you like, from the front and it looks like almost a horizontal line. Here's the gravelly Australian plate, the, the Ice Age gravels. Here's the, the Pacific plate that's come up from depth and being pulled up by movements of the Alpine Fault. Here's, you can really see this gravel quite well, but it's all of these rocks have been really crushed through these earthquakes. And if we look up the valley here, if you look up there, you can see that the line of the fault kind of gets buried a bit by gravel and stuff, but the cataclasite forms a really nice little cliff which we can follow up in the distance. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the drone out and just get a little bit of an aerial view to explore what the fault looks like from above, from a bit of a wider view. And you can see Marty walking up the bottom of the cataclasite outcrop, so he's pretty much on the line of the Alpine Fault as he walks up the gully. And when we go right back like this, you can see that there is a horizontal line going across to the right of the screen. That horizontal line is the Alpine Fault with gravels underneath with a mossy coloured planty vegetated area. And above that you can see the rocks of the Pacific Plate overlying the Australian plate there. What I'd like to do now is go and explore in the next gully around to the right because that gully has been um, washed out quite recently and I don't think many people or maybe even nobody has been up there to have a close look to see if they can find the fault there. So that's what we're going to do next and we'll take the drone and have another look as well with that, get an overview of the situation. We're coming up into the gully on the right, which has been quite freshly exposed over the last year or two. And straight away, we can see at the bottom of the wall of the gully, you can see the gravels and above them, the blue gray rocks. So the fault is cutting across horizontally across that gully. And what we'll do now is we'll take a quick look inside the gully just to see what we can find in as much as it's fairly accessible. Um, we'll have a look. It kind of goes without saying that we don't want the Alpine Fault to rupture right now. I think we'd be toast. But here you can see it. A fresh exposure of the Alpine Fault, possibly never seen before since it was eroded by big storms in the not too distant past. And if we go right up close to this wall, you can actually see a crack line. So if we were to see the surface of that fault, it would be really interesting. I wonder if we can find a place where we can actually see a flat surface of it. We should have a look. Some Pacific plate to find the slip surface at the top of the Australian plate, which is right there.
There you go. Those lines there might be slick and sides. So if I find that on this surface, in situ, it looks like it's going in this direction, which is pretty much north-south. If you can come in close, I think we've got some lines in this direction, which is the top surface of the Australian plate on the Alpine Fault. There it is. We're going to go back down to the relative safety of uh, away from these cliffs and uh, maybe use the drone one more time to take a look around. Um, so here we go. Take off. Sweet. And up we go. Now we're coming into the gully. But you can see the fault there. In the gully. We were in the gully down there. Okay, what I'll do now is I'm going to fly straight back and up into the sky. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learnt a few things about the Alpine Fault. What do you think, Marty? Any comments so far? More than I've ever hoped to learn today, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one.